So when we're talking about linguistic parameters, these are sort of a collection of behaviors that you can observe subjects and, and other things in the language doing or not doing. And it would seem that if they were connected together under one little switch, one little parameter, that would make learning about all these different properties easier to do. So English treats the subject one particular way, which seems to be something like the subject's very important, sort of a caricature of how to think about that. And Italian treats it a different way, which says the subject maybe isn't as important, isn't as pivotal. You can leave it out, you can invert the order, right? You don't have to have a special subject in various cases. And so if they were all connected together under a parameter like the subject parameter, that makes learning easier because you just have to learn that one value and then you're like, oh, is it the English way where the subject's pretty important or the Italian way where the subject's less important, right? And so set it one way and you get English, set it the other way and you get Italian. That's the idea is you can explain a cluster of, in this case, subject behavior by just learning about one thing. Now another example parameter is something that's been called the head directionality parameter. And this has to do with the order that words and phrases appear. So nouns and noun phrases would be the head, verb and verb phrases, prepositions and preposition phrases, sort of the core thing in that phrase. Where does it appear with respect to the other elements in the phrase? What direction uh, is the head, so to speak, compared to the other elements in the phrase? And so in English and Edo, if you have a head first setting, that means you like to have the head of your phrase come before the other stuff. So in the sense of basic word order, inside our verb phrase, we have a verb and an object, and that's the order we like to see them in head first languages. The verb is the head of the verb phrase, and you like to see it first. For prepositional phrases, the reason they're called prepositions is because they come before pre-position, the before position, the rest of the stuff, head first, right, explains both of the verb phrase and the prepositional phrase behavior. So that's one setting. The opposite would be Japanese and Navajo, which would say have head final. And inside your verb phrase, that means you like to have the verb, the head, last, final, right, compared to the object. That's why you would get object verb order in Japanese and Navajo, and why you have post positions, right, because they are the position after the rest of the stuff in that phrase, right? So this two clusters of behaviors at the verb phrase and prepositional phrase level would be explained by a setting of this head directionality parameter, where English and Edo would have one setting and Japanese and Navajo would have the other. And now if we combine that uh, with another parameter having to do with the subject, right? Italian is, is something where the subject's not as important. In English, the subject is kind of important. Right now you have these, these two little switches, these two little parameters that you can, you can flip and it get a whole bunch of different behavior, explain a whole bunch of different patterns that you expect or don't expect to see in that language. So at this level of structural analysis, languages don't differ that much from each other, right? It's just a, one value or the other of this parameter. This makes language structure much easier to learn because you're just learning these two things and these two things, right? As opposed to the whole cluster of behavior that's related to these parameters. So all you need to do as a learner is just set or figure out the right value for that parameter for your language based on data that are pretty easy to observe.